In this video, we'll be looking at Windows Whistler build 2250. This is an early version of what would become Windows XP. This build was compiled on the 20th of June 2000. And this is about six months after Windows Neptune. One thing that's new in this build is this part of setup where it says Windows Setup can automatically configure most aspects of your installation, requiring little or no input from you. If you would like to use this feature, please press enter now. Now, I've tried this both ways. I've tried it by pressing enter and I've tried it by pressing C for custom setup. And there are actually no differences after this point. So I guess the idea would be that if you pressed enter, it wouldn't ask you to tell it what partition to install to and it wouldn't ask to choose how to format the partition but as you can see it does still do that anyway so there are no actual functional differences it doesn't matter what option you choose at that stage so by this build of Whistler we have this new style setup process and as you can see during this part of setup it does identify itself as Microsoft codename Whistler. The setup process design is like a hybrid between Windows 9X and Windows 2000. As you can see it's got the 9X style sidebar on the left with the stages of setup and it's got the Windows Me style background and colours. However, the dialog boxes are like the Windows 2000 dialog boxes in their design, so it's a little bit like both. Now remember what Microsoft were trying to do with Whistler, they were trying to combine the business and consumer versions of Windows, they were trying to combine Windows 2000, the NT line, with the 9x consumer line. So having this kind of hybrid setup kind of makes sense as a visual metaphor for what they were doing. So setup's now finished and here we are at the desktop. So to start with, let's have a look at an explorer window. So this is the documents folder in Whistler build 2250 and you'll notice straight away hopefully that we now have the XP style task pane here in explorer. If you have a look at the view options, you'll also notice that we have the new tiles option, which debuted in XP. Let's go to my computer. We also now have the ability to group icons like this. There's tiles again. Another thing that debuts in this build of Whistler is if you go to control panel, you get these nice new icons. Let's have a look at user accounts. Now, isn't this interesting? This is a lot like the Windows Neptune user accounts dialog box in design and intent. Let's change the logon options. So let's press this box, use the welcome screen. And then I'll log off. So here we are at the welcome screen that debuts in this build. And as you can see, again, this is very, very similar to the welcome screen in Windows Neptune. Notice, by the way, the second user account here. This is not one I've made myself. This actually appears with this build. And you need a password to actually access that. I'm not quite sure what it is though. If you press turn off, you get this new style dialog box, a lot like the XP one. Let's log back in. So let's just go back into user accounts for a moment. So we looked at the welcome screen functionality. Let's have a look what else is there. So you can change the account name, picture, account type, etc. like in XP and in Neptune. These are the default pictures that you get. Not a massive selection, you can use your own though. The account types are like the ones that you get in XP. You can change your password or remove your password. You can turn a guest account on and off as well. Got some extra control panel icons here. This one, speech version 5, is 
not one I'd expect to see there. So we've got these vocabulary tools here, but you can't access the options. So that's odd. Now, as you've probably realized already, a lot of new things debut in this build of Whistler, and it doesn't end there. In fact, if we now go to display properties, you'll notice that we now have this XP style dialog box with different tabs. So we have the introduction of the themes tab, for example. And with this, we have the introduction of the visual style engine and the professional theme. So this is the first time in Windows history that it came out of the box with visual styles this build of Whistler, build 2250, and we have this style here called Professional. Later on this would be known as Watercolour, it's called Professional at this stage. It's a little bit different to what it would be like in later builds, but the basic elements are there. As you can see, all of the images are not actually made at this point, there are no previews or anything. Now, with this new theme, we also get some new start menu functionality and it may not be obvious what I'm talking about at the moment but let's start with these options that we've got here so in the taskbar as we saw in the last build we've got the group option and these other ones here this is new the notification area clean up the notification area so this was in the last build and the options were all in this dialog box but this time you have to click on this customize button and you get to this window where like in XP you can choose whether to always hide or always show or hide when inactive all your notification icons now when I first logged on to this build before I recorded the video I did get a little system tray notification that explained this for me if you hover over this icon it says click on the icon to see more notification icons so you click that and you can see all of your notification icons. If you click it again, it hides them. So let's go back to Start Menu Properties. Now, if we click on the Start tab, this is what it looks like. There's no preview. It just says other stuff to be done, which and I'm not having a go at this, but I just find it quite amusing. This is probably the most unprofessional piece of text I've ever seen in an alpha version of Windows. Other stuff to be done. Now, in this build you can activate a new style start menu, so this obviously is the Windows Classic start menu, but you can activate a newer style one if you go to this dialog box, press the following key combination, Alt and D, and then press apply. So here we have a hidden new style start menu prototype and as you can see even at this very very early stage it does look a lot like the XP start menu. There are a few differences firstly the design which fits in nicely with this professional or watercolor visual style which obviously would change later on. The only other difference really is that the log off and turn off options are up here in the top right hand corner whereas in XP they're actually down the bottom but that essentially is the only difference. So this is what some of the design elements look like when you use them. Here's the more programs menu. Now there's one more interesting thing that I can show you in this build and this might come as a little bit of a surprise especially if you've recently watched the Windows Neptune video. In the web folder, in the Windows folder on this build, there is a folder called Start Page. And in this folder, you have these hidden files. You've got one HTML document, and if you open it, it looks like this. Now, hopefully, you know where I'm going with this. If I go to Active Desktop, and set this as an active desktop. Look at what happens. This is the activity centers from Windows Neptune. Six months later, in build 2250 of Whistler.
which would become XP. The design is a little bit different, but you can tell that this is exactly the same concept. We've got log off and turn off options down here. Quick links to computer, control panel, help, and this one, which goes to control panel as well. Quick link to a recycle bin. Now, these image placeholders, um, obviously the images don't function, but what I can show you now is a screenshot that shows this activity center with functioning images. So have a look. And from that screenshot, you can deduce that this picture here would be linked to your user account picture. So whatever you set your user account picture as, that would display there. This would be your recent programs list, like in this new style start menu. And similar thing here, recent files and folders. And it's almost like at this point, Microsoft weren't sure which one they were going to go for, whether they were going to go with this new style start menu, or whether they were going to go for this full screen UI that replaced the desktop. It could even be possibly that they were going to go for both and just have kind of similar functionality in two different places. So that's that. The Dell logo, I don't really understand the significance of. So internet, as you'd expect, that will go to IE. In this build, it's IE version 5.6. Email goes to Outlook Express 5. And search goes to the classic Windows search. Now, isn't that very, very interesting? Obviously, that idea eventually would become the thing that Windows 8 was really built around, the idea of a full screen UI that replaced the desktop. So that's fascinating that, that even at this stage, six months after Neptune, after Neptune was cancelled, it appears in this build of Whistler. So it just goes to show that Microsoft weren't ready to give up on that idea just yet. And obviously they didn't, but it took a long time for it to come to fruition. So that's it for this video on build 2250 of Windows Whistler, which would eventually become Windows XP. In the next video, we'll have a look at build 2257, which introduced a couple more features that were carried over from Neptune and the official introduction of the new style start menu. So we'll see at that point what's changed. Hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time.